Hey everyone, Michael O'Brien here. Today, and tomorrow, and the next day, we're going to talk about how to work in a restaurant. Hey guys, so I was putting this video together and I realized that it's going to probably be like a 30 minute video. So rather than making you guys sit down and watch a 30 minute video, I thought I'd break this up into three parts. Uh, all related to how to you know get a restaurant gig and how to work in a restaurant so the first video this video right here is just gonna be some ideas for you guys to kind of get your foot in the door and maybe try to set up a meeting with a decision maker whether it be a general manager or even the owner if it's a small business the second video is gonna be what to do and what to say while you're in that actual meeting that interview with the decision maker and then the third one is, congratulations, you've been hired to do the restaurant, and now what am I gonna do? What kind of magic am I gonna perform? Um, what are some of the things I need to look out for? Restaurant etiquette, so that I don't interfere with the operation of the restaurant staff, etc. So anyways, let's go ahead and jump right into this first video, just some ideas on how to get your foot in the door at the restaurant. Now there's thousands of different ways you can do this. I'm not gonna talk about all of them. I'm just gonna talk about a couple of the ways that have worked best for me to kind of get my foot in the door and at the very least get a meeting with the decision maker. Now, when I say decision maker, I mean it has to be someone that has the authority to hire you. So if you're having a meeting with a staff member or if you're having a meeting with uh, even the manager, but they're not the ones that do any of the hiring or anything like that, it's not good enough. It needs to be someone that's gonna hire you on, whether it be a general manager, the person that manages the entire restaurant operation, or if it's a small business, trying to even go above them and go directly to the business owner. That's gonna be your best bet, because of course the business owner has 100% of the decision-making power because it's their restaurant. So one of the ways you can do this is to patronize the restaurant. Now what I mean is actually go and be a customer. Go eat there. Go and have a drink even if it's a bar. Just go, be friendly, mingle with the staff a little bit, have a drink, have a meal, and then very casually bring up, hey, just a quick question. Have you guys ever had any kind of entertainment in here like a magician roaming around doing magic for the guests? They'll either say yes or no. Depending on what they say, you'll either say, oh, awesome, so how did that work out? Or, oh, that's really cool, do you think that would be a fun thing, right? Just kind of make a little bit of small talk with them. Now, of course, you need to keep it super short. They're busy, they have other tables to, to go you know, work with. So you don't want to keep them for too long. But if you have an opportunity to have them sit down with you, maybe for like 30 seconds, just ask them if they've ever had business in there and then just explain, you know, I'm a magician and this is what I do for a living. I go to restaurants and, and I perform for the restaurant and I make the guests happy. I do magic, etc. And if you have a deck of cards or a coin on you or something, you can do something super quick. Uh, color change to change one card to another or make a coin disappear and reappear in the, the waiter's ear or whatever you want to do. Something super fast that gets it like, whoa, like that kind of reaction. Then you can ask them, you know, uh, do you think that that would be really cool? Like, did you like that? Did you, like, what did you think? Of course, they'll say, oh yeah, man, that was really cool. And you say, I wonder if, uh, you know, the manager, the general manager would like to talk about this a little bit. Are they available uh, to come to the table? If they say yes, ask if you can speak to the supervisor, right? And again, try to make it be the general manager. Oftentimes, they're not going to send the general manager to you. They're just going to send the floor manager to you because the floor manager is programmed already in their mind as soon as they say here oh yeah table 13 wants to talk to you the first thing that's going to go through their mind is oh what do i need to do to make them happy because they're probably going to complain about something right that's why i suggest that you get the restaurant server excited about it so that when they go to talk to that person you know, they'll say, oh, you know, it's really cool. You know, this guy at table 13, he's a magician. He wants to talk to talk to you and show you something. The guy will come over. You'll speak with him. And uh, if it's the decision maker, you want to ask them, you know, hey, do you, do you have maybe 15, 20 minutes I can come in sometime and sit down with you and actually show you what it is that I do? I give you a proper demo. 
Try to see if you can set up some kind of meeting to come in. Don't try to get them to sit there at your table right then and there and show them because they're probably busy doing something else. You don't want to interrupt their day. If they're not busy and they say, you know what, let's do it right now, of course that's fine. You can do it right now if you're there and prepared. But I would suggest trying to get a meeting set up some other day that you can come in for 15 minutes, talk to them and show them what you do. That's the goal. If it's not the decision maker that you're talking to, ask them when the decision maker is in and if you can get into contact with them. Try to get their business card, their phone number, their email address. Reach out to that person. Find out when that person is going to be in so that you can set up some sort of meeting with that person. And you want to try to do this on a day that's not super busy. Again, you don't want to be sitting there, hey, so have you ever had a magician in your... While there's like a line out the door of people and like the servers are going crazy because the restaurant's slow and or there's food's coming out slow and, and all this stuff. Pick a day, probably during the week. 10 o'clock in the morning, 1 in the afternoon, something like that, where you know it's not going to be slow. Don't come in on a Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and expect that they're going to want to sit down with you. So that's the first way you could do it, is simply visit the restaurant uh, as a patron, order some food, make small talk with the staff, and try to see if you can get a decision maker, or at the very least someone that can get you access to as a decision maker, to chat with you for a couple minutes so that you can get your foot in the door and set up a meeting. Right? That's the first way to do it. The second way to do it is good old fashioned uh, canvassing. Now this essentially means you're going to go from restaurant to restaurant, walk in with your little folder and say, hello, my name is Michael. I'm actually the local entertainer and my job is to go from restaurant to restaurant and uh, perform magic. And I saw your establishment. I thought it would be perfect for this environment. And I was wondering if I can speak to someone about possibly working here. And then you're going to kind of do the same thing and try to get similar to the first point, try to get a decision maker to speak with you or at the very least someone that can get you access to a decision maker. Now the downside to doing it this way is you're going to get a lot of no thank yous right off the bat because you don't have the power in this situation. You're coming in off the street and asking someone, Hey, can I take some of your time? so that I can speak to you about you hiring me to do something in your restaurant, right? So the idea is to kind of come off in a way uh, where you're not seeming so, you know, salesman -y, I guess is the way to put it. You want to kind of come in and just say, you know, hey, I, I just, I don't want to take any time today, but I just wanted to let you know, you know, this is what I do, X, Y, Z, and if it's possible for me to set up a meeting, 10, 15 minutes of your time just so I can kind of show you what it is that I do and how my services can benefit you, right? That's pretty much what your goal is. Again, try to set up a meeting, right? The third way that you can do this is to send a letter, make it out to the decision maker. If you don't know who the decision maker is, of course, again, you can visit the restaurant and you can ask whether you did canvassing or you visited as a patron. Right? So this is a good follow-up way. Like if they weren't able to come see you that day for some reason or they weren't available, get that information from them. Handwrite the envelope. Don't type it out, make it look nice. Handwrite it. Tests have shown that when an envelope has handwritten the address and everything on it, you're like 58% more likely to open it. Uh, 58, 57, something like that more likely to open it than if you were, if it looked nice with like a letterhead and everything. Because when I see it with a letterhead and it looks really nice, that just screams solicitation to me. But if it's handwritten, there's a chance that it might be from someone that you know, like a friend or a family member or something. And you're just like, what? Like who's sending me this? They're more willing to open it so it doesn't just get tossed right straight in the bin. Handwrite it, write a nice letter, explaining who you are, what you do, your services, etc. Now, Chances are you're probably not going to get a phone call back. You might, you might get a phone call, you might get an email if they are really interested in what your letter had to say, but chances are more than likely you're not. So now wait about a week, give them a phone call and say, hello, my name is Michael and uh, I sent you a letter last week. I was just curious to know if it, if it reached you, were you able to see it? 
they'll either say yes or no. If they say yes, then you can sit, you can kind of move on from there and start talking to them about, you know, oh, so, you know, this is what I do. And I was just curious if you were interested, I'd like to come in 15 minutes of your time, ba 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 ba, just like we've said before. If they say, no, I haven't received it, you can just say, oh, that's weird because I did send it out. It should have made it to your desk, but it's okay. If you'd like, I can send you some more information, right? I can send you an email. Or if you would like, I'm more than happy to come straight into the office and sit down with you for 15 minutes and ba 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 ba. So notice this kind of recurring theme here. No matter which method you use, the goal is to set up a meeting with the decision maker so that you can sit down in person and have an interview with them. So those are just some of the ways that have worked for me. Uh, just recently, I interviewed for a restaurant gig literally like what day was it this monday so that was like three days ago four days ago today's friday five days ago wow time flies i actually uh visited the restaurant and just said hey wow this is like a really nice place you just opened right i noticed you've been open for like a week now and uh, you have other locations right uh, this is a really cool place um i was just wondering is the general manager in today i'd like to chat with him a little bit about something he wasn't available that day, so they gave me his business card, and uh, I sent him an email, a nice email, and uh, waited a couple days, didn't hear back, gave him a phone call, he answered, I chatted with him on the phone, asked him if he got my email, he said, no, I haven't had a chance to look at it, we've been super busy, and like we just opened last week, and I haven't really gotten caught up on my emails, and blah, 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 you know, whatever the, uh, the excuse was. I said, oh, no, that's fine. I completely understand. You know, you're really busy. And I know it's super hectic, especially when you're trying to open a brand new restaurant in a new location. But uh, how about this? On a day that you don't think it's going to be too busy, do you think it would be okay if I came in and maybe sat down with you for 10, 15 minutes and chatted with you a little bit about what it is that I do? And he said, yeah, you know, does Wednesday sound okay? And said, you know what? Yeah, that sounds good. Wednesday at 3 o'clock work for you? Perfect. I'll be there right at 3 o'clock. I went in, I had my interview, and that's all I did. You know, it doesn't have to be anything crazy. And just understand that a lot of the time, they're going to just straight out not be interested. Don't get discouraged. Just keep on going. Work on your people skills, how you talk to people, and try to make it less about I want, I want, I want, but make it more about this is what I can do for you because that's going to go a lot further. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you got some useful information out of it. I know I rambled a little bit longer than I wanted to, but stick around because the next video, part two, is going to be what to do when you're actually sitting down in that interview face-to-face -face with the decision maker, what to say, what to do, how to increase the chance that they are actually going to give you an opportunity to work in their restaurant. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe and click all the bells and whistles and likes. And of course, if you have questions, leave a comment, all that good stuff. Stay tuned for part two.